All right. So uh, yeah, no, we're we're actually doing that. That's a real thing we're gonna do. Who knows what this part is? Yeah, everyone knows what this part is. Everybody. my talk uh thanks it wasn't actually my talk but i uh <laughs> that's all i got no so that was kind of i when i proposed this talk i was like i'm gonna totally go into like the virtual reality thing from jurassic park and i was like kind of bullshitting but um then i had to make it real because i put it in a github issue so um so we'll be talking about this but just keep that in the back of your mind okay um and this was another thing I was kind of joking about, but I'm going to make it real. Um, did you hear when they were kind of doing the Jurassic Park at the end theme at the end there? Do you guys know the Jurassic Park theme? Can we all hum it? Ready, Pavel? Go. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> all right, that's good enough. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Keep going throughout the entire presentation. So my talk is navigating virtual worlds in cyberspace with virtual reality modeling language. Right here, VRML or Vermal. This is a real Vermal. It's Vermalin. Or uh, the virtual cyber apocalypse, the death and return of VR. Or how VRML was kind of ridiculous, but also totally right all along. Uh, I'm Dan. Um, I couldn't think of a good slide, so here's my badge. Um, I'm D Harden on Twitter. Uh, whatever. Feel free to follow me or don't. I don't care. Uh, I work for the Zappo.com, like Pavel, in the spirit of DHTMLConf. Here's a screen cap from the year 2000 of Zappos.com. This is real. Uh, I think it was ASP Classic or something at the time. I don't know. I didn't work there. I take no responsibility of anything on this image. So, yeah. Um, also pushing Vegas JS. If you guys are ever in Vegas, uh, come to Vegas JS or like hit me or Pavel or someone up on Twitter and we'll like go nuts and not actually gamble, which is probably why you're in Vegas in the first place. Um, yeah, so let's take things back a little bit. I know this is DHTML Conf 2000 and all, but we're going to take it way back. Um, the year is 1995. Uh, do you guys know that? Don't, whatever. It's a guy. Um, <laughs> Gangst According to the Billboard music charts at the end of the year, uh, Gangsta's Paradise was the number one song. That's still in my car. Uh, virtual reality was kind of everywhere. Um, there were like 87 million movies um, that either used or like alluded to or in some way had something to do with virtual reality. Uh, you had like Lawnmower Man, uh, The Net, like hackers. I mean, it, it was a crazy time. Uh, everybody was getting into the game, um, including various... <laughs> Did anyone have a Virtual Boy? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's coming back at the end of this presentation. Get, get ready. Don't worry about it. Um, but virtual reality it was kind of this like huge, clunky thing. Uh, this was a video I couldn't get to load right, so I turned it into like a 16 megabyte GIF. <laughs> GIF, not GIF. So, like, there were news reports, and, like, I guess he's a reporter, and they're, like, strapping him into this machine. But, like, the games kind of look like this. Uh, this is Dactyl Nightmare. Uh, the Dactyl's going to come. Hold on. <laughs> so that's the Dactyl. I guess the rest of it's the Nightmare. But 
this is the kind of thing like you would go to the mall and pay like way too much money to strap in and then you would never be able to figure out how to do anything and then the dactyl, I don't know. But this was kind of a thing. Everybody really thought that VR was going to take off. So why wouldn't you have some way to describe it, right? So this is virtual reality modeling language, initially known as virtual reality markup language, uh, not at all related to HTML. Uh, but I think they kind of wanted to cash in on that. So if virtual reality was going to be like the big thing, right, like this, this makes perfect sense. But you got to remember, like, this was the internet of 1995. Like, <laughs> this is a real thing. Um, so this, this is an actual quote, and I want everyone to kind of take a look at this, and we'll examine some key points. This is a quote from the, from the VRML spec version 1.0c. <laughs> They are rendered, everyone say rendered sensually. <laughs> if something is rend represented sensually, it is possible to make sense of it. VRML is an attempt, how successful only time and effort will tell, to place humans at the center of the internet. So that's, all right. Um, yeah, that's what it is, right? I think, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I swear it kind of makes sense because remember, Remember the internet of 1995. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, who used hot metal ever? That's a hell of an HTML editor. Like, it was a really terrible place, and like, let's go back to Pizza Hut. Just take that in. <laughs> if, if you have never used the internet, or if it was like this crazy thing, or you'd like hear the kids talking about surfing the, like, the webosphere or whatever, like, you didn't know how any of this shit worked. Um, just a really basic thing, like how do you go to a website was a mystery when there's all of this nonsense going on. So I think VRML was a good step in that direction, I promise. So we're going to come back to this because I said that I would. Um, I think that this is really along the same lines. Um, did you know that this is a, like a real program? Um, this is a thing that there's a there's an open source version now. You can like brew install it, and it like depending on if you like have the right C compiler in the right like phase of the moon or whatever like you could run this shit. This is like browsing a file system, and I think it's a Unix system. I know this. <laughs> I really think that there was a fear of like taking these abstract concepts like navigating a file system or going to a website or buying something online or ordering a pizza or whatever, and you really wanted to relate that to human things. Like if you say like go to a folder, well by God you're going to a folder. You are flying to it and shining a light on it and going to it. So I think VRML is really kind of the same thing, but for the internet. Here is a real no shit VRML client. Um, it's awesome and I love it. Black Sun, right? Yeah? OK. So you could actually move around in this world and you could talk to people and you could, what are they talking about? I don't know. Whatever. Terrible stuff. I don't know. This is a, and I've, I've capped this iframe at 800 by 600 for like the real experience, but <laughs> you, could, you could go to these worlds and it wasn't just like, when you talk to chatting people online, like this is really, you're going to go like to their like castle house and you will chat with them and it's a real, you're there. You are in two rooms or an executive <laughs> office or castle haunted, which might be my favorite. <laughs> So there was a variety of VRML browsers, and like, look at, there's a bunch here. And these websites are all still up. These are just iframes that I'm embedding. Um, there's like a bunch, right? Keep in mind how many there are here, because this is another thing that's going to come up later. Um, there was kind of a lot of things that people hadn't, like, they weren't taking it for granted. Like, does anyone even ever say, like, ah, oh, my avatar, or maybe, like, if you're customizing your character in like World of Warcraft or something, maybe it comes up. But there were a lot of like really deep, very well thought out spiritual things people were writing about avatars. Man, like you'd go on a journey and like you wouldn't have to be like whatever. You would choose your avatar. Like if you wanted to be like a fish or I think that's Crash Bandicoot. I don't know, a bowling ball? <laughs> like. You could be whatever you wanted to be. And in a way, that's kind of beautiful. Um, in a way, it's also a little, I don't know, it's something. <laughs> but I think a lot of people, this was very new to everyone, the idea that you could go and you could talk to someone from whatever country you don't know, and they're from anywhere. They're not just, you're not constrained by 
really anything, except kind of your terrible computer that probably could not render this scene. Um, now we use VRML for everything. Um, <laughs> right? Well, okay, we don't. So what went wrong? Like, what, what killed VRML? And I will also posit to you that it is not dead. Um, I, think, I think there's really a couple things. Uh, number one, probably dial-up. When's the last time you heard, heard this sweet jam? Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, when you're going through and you're trying to render a 3D world, and like maybe if you've got like that really good computer, you've got 56K, like most people didn't. And especially when you're connecting to someone across the world and the servers and who knows, and like you probably don't even have, like you don't have a graphics card, that's not much of a thing, like maybe a voodoo, whatever, but like this is a problem, right? Your computer, your connection, like for 3D is not a thing that you can do. Like if you, even today, like if you go onto some, like the hot new MMORPG or something, it's probably gonna lag, like it's a thing. Um, I think another problem was the dot-com bubble. Um, Remember when I said that there was all like all these guys, like a million things? They all bought each other. So all of these bought each other and bought their developers and bought each other out. And then eventually Computer Associates came in and bought the final one and just said, like, ah, we're done, like, no more VR VRML. So suddenly there wasn't a market, which is like really I mean there wasn't. So it's okay. But I would say number three, three D is kind of that's a distracting gif. <laughs> I don't know, 3D is maybe not the most ideal way to do things. Um, like, I keep going back to this idea of like you want to buy something online. You don't need to, or like say you want to go and you want to go to Wikipedia and you want to read about uh, platypuses or like fish or like a tiger. You want to read about tigers. Um, you don't need to drive to the virtual Wikipedia enter the library, browse the endless, t like the matrix when like the things come in, like, you don't, that's silly, like you just type tiger and you get it, tigers, you don't have to do that, like, you understand, right? So, I don't know, but wait, these were some of the goals that they were talking about in that ridiculous manifesto, I mean spec. Um, they want to perceptualize the internet. They want to kind of enable people to get together. And like, of course, having cool VR experiences is probably the main draw of VRML, right? I kind of think we do all of these things. So maybe VRML was ahead of its time. So like perceptualizing the internet, you're not so much, if, if I was like, hey, can you go to a website and like click a thing and whatever, like that's not, that's not scary, that's just second nature to everybody, right? It wasn't in 1995, it wasn't in 98, it wasn't necessarily in 2000 or whatever, but like, I feel like it's not so bad to go to a website now. Just the idea of going to a website isn't terrifying. Um, oh, that's the wrong order. There's my cart slide. I was gonna be like, oh look, here's adding to a cart versus a real cart, but whatever. Um, let's talk about enabling human connections. And I, I, I realized after this, this isn't a human. <laughs> I don't care, I love this GIF. <laughs> so, like we all know the internet can be a terrible place full of terrible people, but like who's made a friend on the internet? Like an actual friend that you feel like you know them. Who's made friends that are better than like maybe some of your real friends? Okay, and I, I, would, I would even posit like, I've known some of you like through Twitter or through whatever, never met you until maybe like today. That's pretty powerful, right? And I didn't need to like, I don't, I don't remember entering any of your VRML castle haunteds or anything <laughs> for us to have a conversation, although I wish we had. Which, and let me, let me, let me digress for a second. This wasn't part of the talk, but um, just wanted to say, thanks everybody for being really cool, cause like I didn't really know anybody, but like everyone's been really inviting and I was kind of terrified to do this whole thing. So thanks for being cool. That's, that's me, I'm the chicken right there. <laughs> So, anyway. You're one of us, man. Yeah. That's scary. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. C cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's talk about cool VR experiences. Um, hey, 
who knows about the Oculus Rift? Like, <laughs> people are sinking some serious money into that, right? And it's like pretty cool. Um, how about, did I take out my Google? No, I didn't. It's just impossible. Oh, you can kind of read it. I didn't, I shouldn't have made it the same color as like cardboard. <laughs> uh, Google Cardboard is this thing where you can basically cut out this kind of stencil, make it out of cardboard or whatever, slap it over your phone, and you get a pretty good VR experience. And that's Google, and that's like, it's really neat. That's a thing we're doing right now. That's like brand new shit. So I think we're doing VR. Um, let's, let's, let's go back to this, because this is really the crux of the talk right here. Um, if, if the idea is that you, know, you want to bring the internet and make it something people can understand, and you want to bring multi-participant people in, and I don't know about the rendering essentially, like I'm not, <laughs> we'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer, I'm not going into that. Um, I think we're kind of doing that. Like maybe VRML wasn't the way to do that, but philosophically, and this is a pretty philosophical spec, let's be honest, I really think they're on the right track. So let's hear it for VRML, but wait, there's more. You know how I said it wasn't dead? It's totally not dead. Um, there's a few folks who are really like, and let's, let's talk about the most Unix thing I've ever read in my life. Like, <laughs> that's a stretch. That's a stretch. I don't know. So X3DOM or X-Freedom, as I will refer to it, is like this effort to get this stuff into the browser. So X3D is kind of the successor to uh, VRML. It's an XML-based language, and we all, we all love XML, uh, right? Um, this is kind of working in the browser, and like, never mind that they've shimmed it in with like OpenGL and like Canvas and like all this stuff. They want this to be a spec. I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but like, someone's keeping up the fight, and like, they're like, they have a fork me on GitHub. Like, that's, that means it's new, and they're really like, Google Cardboard, and X3D, and VRML, and Freedom. Like, <laughs> this is a real thing that people are working on right now. Um, <laughs> so never mind that this technology is however old. Like, it's a thing. Um, and I think it's powerful because, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> So like, we can inspect this, and you can see this amazing syntax describing cubes and whatever. But um, it's, yeah, I don't know. I know there's like 8 million ways we can do 3D in the browser, but this one has a, a spec, and that's pretty good. So and I'm not saying maybe everyone go out and do X3D, but I will say that pretty much every 3D modeling thing, like whether it be something fancy or like Tinkercad or like whatever, can probably output X3D. Or some of them can even output VRML files directly. So if nothing else, it lives on as an interchange format? I don't know. That's something. But I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I know VRML sounds like I went into this thinking VRML was kind of silly. I came out, and this is someone who was really thinking it was pretty cool back in the day. Um, I think now it was a ahead of its time, and maybe we're not using the VR part of the VRML, which is kind of, well, really all of it. Um, <laughs> but the philosophy kind of lives on. So uh, that's pretty much it. Here's the last bit of the RML.